video we looked at the histogram and we went into all sorts of detail on how to accurately read it. In this video we're going to see how the levels command can actually manipulate that histogram and improve the appearance of the photograph. I have opened an image entitled Roller Coaster which is available from inside the project files and as I'm sitting here right now looking at this photograph I'm sitting here thinking that looks a little bit faded lacking contrast maybe. The colours are great, they're really vivid but the brightness leaves a lot to be desired. Well we're going to roll up our sleeves and attempt to adjust the photograph using the levels command. So come over here to the layers panel and click the little black white icon which is the adjustment layer icon down here at the bottom and then we'll select levels. Notice that opens up the command inside the adjustments panel and also notice we are presented with our resident histogram. Now Levels doesn't give us a number of different histograms to choose from in the way that the histogram panel does if you're familiar with that. So we're already going to have the RGB histogram selected in the drop down menu. And if you were following along in the previous video by the way, you'll know straight away that the histogram is telling us we're dealing with a low contrast image, courtesy of the peaks being present throughout the midtones area and none in the shadows and highlights. Now the great thing about levels is that we get access to these three little handles beneath the histogram itself. The one on the left is called the black point slider and that's going to control the shadows in the photograph. On the other side we have the white point slider which is going to control the highlights and in the middle we have the midtone slider which is going to control how light or how dark the midtones are. We're going to completely ignore this gradient bar down here at the bottom as well as the output levels values as it turns out they're not going to prove very useful for photographic images. OK so let's turn our attention to these values beneath the three respective sliders well, these record the exact brightness levels for wherever we have our sliders positioned. Notice if I move the black point slider, the numerical value changes automatically, and vice versa. So if I highlight the number and then change it to a zero by typing that in on the keyboard, our sliders get reset back to where it started out. That gives us the option of either working numerically or moving the sliders around which gives us a little more creative freedom but if you're like me you'll no doubt end up using both. Now the whole idea of levels is that you can move the sliders around to change the appearance of the image so we can do that in either the composite view where we're going to be able to fix brightness and contrast issues or we can do it inside the individual colour channels which we're going to be looking at in much more detail inside the next video. Let's have a look at how these sliders work. Well at the moment the black point slider of the image is at the zero brightness level which is standard as we discussed in the previous video. What we are, what we can do though is move it to where our pixels sit in the image. So let's drag that slider up to a value of say 45. Somewhere in this region should look good. Now pixels with a brightness value, what's going on here? Let me explain. Pixels with a brightness value of 45 or less are now being mapped to black. Hence why we're now seeing more contrast within the shadows of the image. Notice if I move the slider up too far, say to the middle of the histogram, we turn many more pixels black. So if we move it to 140 say for example, somewhere around that number, we're now turning all the pixels in the photograph that have a brightness value of 140 or lower to black. And that's not a desirable effect of course. This blackness in the image is known as clipping, where we've clipped the pixels to pure black. This is also true if we'd have done the same with the white point slider. A great way to see the clipping is to hold down the ALT key here on the keyboard if you're using a PC, or the OPTION key if you're using the Mac and now drag the slider along. Notice if we take that back down towards the shadows we're seeing a white image meaning that we're not clipping any pixels to black. If I move that up into the beginning of the peaks we start to see some colour appear meaning that we're now getting some clipping occurring in 
one or more color channels. When we start to see black pixels, we know we've clipped pixels in all three color channels and therefore we're turning the pixel completely to black. I'm going to take that slider back to 45 and then Alt or Option click it to see that we're clipping very few pixels. OK, now let's turn our attention to the white point slider. Go ahead and drag this one down following the exact same principles as laid out with the black point slider that we discussed a few seconds ago. I'm going to take it down to a value of 220 or somewhere in that region and then I'll Alt or Option click the slider just to see how much of the image we're clipping which is a fair bit of the tracks here in the middle so I'll just ease the slider back up to a value of say 225 and this is one of those times where you're going to find that the numerical controls make it a lot easier to get to where you want to go so we're now saying that every pixel with a brightness value of 45 or less is going to be mapped to black every pixel with a brightness value of 225 or higher is going to be clipped to white and then all the other brightness values in between the black and white point are going to get redistributed evenly across the board that leaves us with a higher contrast image and one that looks much better than the original in my humble opinion to confirm that I'll toggle on and off the eyeball icon at the bottom of the adjustments panel just to see how much better things are looking now. The final value I'm going to have a look at changing is this value below the midtones, officially known as the gamma value, but more commonly referred to as the midtone slider here in levels. The odd thing about this value is that it isn't measured in terms of brightness like the other two are. Instead it's measured as an exponent so the value represents a power of itself. For example, if I change the value to 2.0 instead of 1.0, we would double the brightness of the midtones. Likewise, if we change the value to 0.5, we halve the lightness and end up with a photograph twice as dark in the midtones. In any event, let's not get too wrapped up in that. Instead, I recommend you worry more about the way the photo looks and less about whether you have the right or wrong values. I'll switch that back to 1.0 so we're back to where we started now let's decide if we need to make any modifications to this slider so as we saw a few seconds ago if we move the slider to the left we lighten the midtones and if we move it to the right we darken them the great thing about this slider is that we're not going to affect the shadows or highlights just the midtones as it turns out I think a slight darkening of the midtones will set this photograph off nicely. So let's move the slider back to 1.0 if it's not there already and then push it over to the right. Another top tip on how to work is to use the keyboard controls for these type of adjustments. Click inside the midtone value and then we can use the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard to increase or decrease the value. I'll take that back to 1 so we know where we are. Now in order to darken the midtones in larger increments, hold down the shift key and press the down arrow key at the same time. We'll do that twice so we arrive at a value of 0.8 and I'd say that's looking really good. The great thing about doing it this way is that you can see quite substantial changes to the photograph as you're working and you have the knowledge of exactly how many increments you're adjusting it by. Anyhow that's really good. I'm going to toggle the visibility of the adjustment layer to see how the image looked before and how it looks now. Quite an incredible change. And remember we've done all of that inside of just the composite view of the histogram. So we haven't made any specific adjustments to colour, just the brightness and contrast of the photograph and look what we've achieved. Well I hope you've picked up a few tips and tricks there. Make sure you give it a practice inside your own images. And coming up next, we're going to go one step further by working inside the individual color channels right here inside of Levels.